This is the Sinclair ZX81. It's a computer produced by now Sir Clive Sinclair and launched in 1981, hence the 81 part of it. It's a really, really important machine and one that is hugely misunderstood and unfairly treated in my opinion. This is a machine that I had in 81 as a kid. Um, we got it delivered, uh, albeit late, as most people, and, um, and we built it as that kit. It was quite a simple board, just a single board inside uh, that you solder together and plug in this whole keyboard mechanism overlay at the front. And um, you had a computer with a full 1K of memory. What's really important about it is the price. So it gets ridiculed because it had a number of drawbacks uh, and deficiencies, but nothing else touched it on price, okay? This was the first machine you could really go out to the high street and buy from somebody like Boots or WH Smiths, and that was a big deal. So it's no longer looking in the backs of electronics magazines. This was walking down the high street, oh look, there's a home computer, should we buy one? Um, and people did, and they bought a lot of them. And that was about the price. So this machine was sub 100 pound. To my knowledge, it's about the first machine that actually took that price point. And that made it, although still quite a bit of money, you know, you had to think about it. It wasn't just sort of throwaway money. Um, it was something that people were kind of encouraged to buy. The government was talking about computers and how uh, they were going to be the future. And for once, the government was right. And, um, and you know, everything was about you know, moving ahead and, and getting computers into our lives. And the X81 was the, a cheap way of doing it, or a relatively cheap way of doing it. So this is the machine. That's what you had when you built it all up. It has a very cheap membrane keyboard, so no moving parts to it, really. You can just touch the, the buttons there. Uh, it has a simple circuit board inside, just one circuit board with all the components on, and it had this connector at the back, which allowed you to increase it to a massive 16K of memory with that RAM pack which quite famously uh, sort of suffered from ram, ram pack wobble. Uh, so once you plug the, the pack in at the back there, if it moved at any point while you were typing your code, it would lose the connections, lose the memory, and you'd have to start all over again. Um, and if you typed in sing, uh, 16K of code, that was a big deal, slightly annoying. So you'd have a cassette player. Uh, most people in their homes at the time had a, a cassette player that they were using for their music, and you could buy programs on those tapes and load them in from tapes. So that was feasible. You tended to spend ages just getting the volume exactly right. Um, there would be a pattern on the screen, and that would tell you whether that, that black and white bars and the width of the bars would tell you whether it's about right. But even when it was right, half the time it well, not half. Sometimes it failed uh, and you'd have to start again. Um, I think we tend to give it a hard time from that point of view. I think it worked a lot more than we remember. You just remember those times where it let you down. There was no monitor for it as such. You hopefully had a spare TV in the dining room or kitchen maybe, uh, a little black and white screen like this, and you'd plug it in to the aerial socket of the TV and you'd have a power adapter that gives it nine volts and you plug it in screen goes blank for a second and we should end up with a little K in the bottom corner. So that K there is telling us it's ready for action. Very minimal booting up time. The little delay as we plugged it in was it testing the memory. Actually, if you did the same thing without the memory, the K appeared pretty much instantly. So that was just a little memory test that it was doing. But once you had that, you're ready to go. So you had a look at the manual. It was a very, very good manual, actually. And in the manual was all these little example programs that went through basic. Basic was the language that it used, which stands for beginners, all purpose, symbolic instruction code. I've got a feeling that was kind of retrofitted to the word basic rather than the other way around, but anyway. Um, and, uh, and most home computers of that time used basic as the, as the language. Um, but you'd have these little uh, example programs and you'd type them in, see what they did, maybe understand what they did, change it for yourself, make it do something you wanted it to do. And for me, that was my first foray into, into actual programming, um, typing in the demonstrations, then modifying them to do what I wanted to do. And for most people, their first program would be something along these lines. So, 10. And they're quite interesting, the way you enter the data, because you would think now you type in print, P-R-I-N-T, but actually all you do is press the P key, and it has something called a tokenized basic. So it didn't store all these letters, it just stored the one token for the print command, which allowed you to get more programming into a small space. You've got these commands that are written above the keys, and that made typing things in that little bit quicker. For this keyboard, that was kind of important. <laughs> um, so then I would type in something like, Jason is great, and you press new line to enter it, and it would jump up to the top of the screen, and that line of code is now in there. And the next line, probably everybody watching is gonna be practically singing this, because everybody knows it. It's like, go to 10. So our first line of code says, Jason is great. 20, 
go to 10. So the, the line 20 would go back to line 10 and we type in run. We'll press R for run and press return. And there you go. Screen full of whatever it was. For a lot of people, it would be going into Dixon's of a, of a Saturday morning or WH Smith's or Boots or whatever. They'd have one of these on display. The message would be somewhat ruder. Um, and you would type that in, press run and leg it. And, um, and that, for a lot of people, is their, their fond memories of their first use of computers. Um, but, you know, as simple as that is, we're still teaching that code here in the museum today um, to, to squirrel groups that come in. And they love it. You know, it's, it's immediate. You do that, you type it in, and it runs. And they think, well, actually, I wanted to say something else. So they change it. And now they're ty typing in code and they're making that code their own. And then maybe they get it to count or there are all sorts of things from there. But that's a really good starting point. Um, and probably for most people that are programmers, that's the first thing they ever typed in. It was cheap. And that was the most important thing about it. Yeah, you could afford to buy one of these machines. It didn't have the capacity of the, the other machines that would come later or even before. Um, and it, it was, you know, made cheap in every single way possible. And that was both the beauty of it um, and also the curse. Uh, you know, it did take a lot of stick because um, it wasn't a proper computer. But actually, it really was. And it did change things for a lot of people. We'd like to thank Squarespace for this episode of Computerfile. Now, hang on, I know what you're thinking, but they don't just do paint by numbers websites. Computerfiles might want to check out their developer platform. And if you enter the code Computerfile, you'll get 10% off. I put together a website on Squarespace, and I know that as well as looking great, it's also going to be fully configurable. They start at $8 a month, and if you sign up for a year, they'll give you a free domain name. What's really cool is there's no need for any credit card details to get started. Just sign up and start building. So thanks once again to Squarespace for sponsoring this computer file video. Remember, enter the code computer file for 10% off. Here's the big reveal. So this is the internals of our serial number three, um, and it's quite drastically different.